Good morning, good morning from Washington State and the Olympic National Park. Thought I'd go ahead and get on here and see if I could do a live stream this morning because the internet out here is pathetic. <laughs> I tried it with my little Verizon hotspot. And no go. So I did a speed test here yesterday. And for those of you that understand internet speeds, um, the speed test website just laughed at me when I, when I went there. So I hope it's working on your end. You can see the lake in the background. Uh, this is where I grew up. I learned how to water ski right out there. I'll show you a view in a second. But let's get right to the numbers this morning, shall we? I'm going to show you. I'm going to share the screen here. This is my seven-day moving average again. And you can see that we're just kind of stuck in this area where listings started climbing up around the first part of August and then just started muddling along again. You go back here to May, April and May. Here's Memorial Day. Here's Fourth of July, these dips. This is when things were nuts. This is when you had all the overbidding and stuff going on and inventory was consistently lower than listings that were coming up. I mean, look back here, the blue line, you can't even see it. But now you see a gap and we had a real jump the past seven day moving average. And I suspect that that's because we're going to have uh, some new listings coming on for Labor Day weekend. So good morning, running at altitude. Um, so that's going to be interesting to see. What we're seeing, though, is if you look at, uh, let me pull up here the Cromford report, and these are homes under contract, and it's always kind of wonky when I do this with my uh, my laptop. I will get used to it. And we've got people having breakfast behind us here, too, so that's kind of fun, huh? Let's see, Chrome tab, here we go. Are you ready? Here it comes. So this is the one I like to look at, closings per month above list price. We have we were at about 60 to 64%. Now we're at 53%. So it's a 7% drop. But the good news is, oh, and here's where the slow internet is going to raise its ugly head. It's going to take, oh, good, it didn't do it. So the good news is, is these are all down to the average above list price is about $15,000 on half of those homes. So in other words, in the 400 to 500,000 range, 730 sold. And of those, half of them had an average above list price of $15,000. So that number's improving. It was running about 20 to 25 back in that wild time that I was showing you before. Now, Redfin's got some interesting numbers here showing on their searches, people moving from their metro area to another part of the country. And Phoenix is number one on the search. Net inflow of 11,450. Where are they coming from? Yep, Los Angeles. Second one is Las Vegas. And where are they coming from? Los Angeles. So Phoenix is top in the list and people from California that want to get out. Here's an interesting one. The people from Sacramento are getting an influx from Reno. And uh, probably not this week, though, because of the fires down there. Miami's getting their searches from people living in New York. So is Tampa. So is Atlanta, Georgia. Austin, Texas is getting a lot of interest from people in San Francisco. Los Angeles is also looking at Dallas and Chicago, Cape Coral, Florida, and Orlando, Florida. So there's a lot of people um, not seeing the data, just you on the screen. Oops, hold on. Let's see. Let me take a look here and see what's going on. It should be showing up there now. Um, see it? Oh, thank you. Thanks for when I go over and I look at the data, I, then I can't see uh, this screen. So it's a challenge, but I'm getting there. Anyway, um, th that's on relocating. Now, for mortgages right now, we're not seeing much of a change of anything. Uh, let's take a look at the mortgage rates here. And I'll get this to pull up. It'll be real fast, won't it? <laughs> you have no idea how slow it is out here. So uh, come on, baby. You can do it. Getting the mortgage news daily here, remember? Um, it's not letting me do it at the moment. So going back to um, our market here, what you can expect to see is coming up is that we're going to have another dip over Labor Day like we did on the 4th of July. So we're going to see um, sales go down and listings kind of hover around the same, the same area. So it's going to look like Nobody's buying anything, but it's Labor Day weekend. People are going to leave. They're going to leave the valley. They're not going to be out searching for homes. So I think you're going to see a lot of that going on. Nationally, though, we're seeing a slowdown, but it's not much of a slowdown. I mean, those numbers that I'm showing you on that chart, keep in mind, it's only three or 400 homes. It's not a lot. So it's not going to change the data as we're looking at it. And I'm still looking at my mortgage rate. Let me see. Here it is. 
Today, 2.92. Yesterday, 2.91. Not much going on. The bond market doesn't have a whole lot to worry about or be concerned about right now. So, so they're not panicking. They're kind of waiting for the Fed to make a move. The Fed says they might make a move towards the end of the year, but nobody knows for sure. One price range that we talked about earlier in the week that's seeing a lot of activity in contracts is between 400 and 500,000. And I can't wait to see the data at the end of the month here that says how many of those were the iBuyers like open to our offer pad and Zillow because they're gobbling up that market because they want to, you know, even though we're seeing a slight slowdown, prices are still going up. So they're getting their margins. So I think their economists have said, get out and grab as much as you can in the final quarter of 2021. And I think you're going to see that show up when we look at those numbers. But having said that, between 500 and 600,000, that market's climbing pretty good as well as far as number of contracts per week. And I think that's just simply because more homes are becoming available. And because they're becoming more available, there is more, um, there, there's more homes going under contract because the I buyers don't play in that sandbox above $500,000. So I don't expect to see anything going on there at all. Um, the rental moratorium, that one's still, it's, it's ending. Um, and Biden is talking about sending out stimulus checks to renters uh, because the CDC was overruled by the Supreme Court. And so they're trying to figure out a way to get some more help for the renters. And that's puzzling to me because there was $48 billion sent out to the states to assist renters. All they had to do was ask for it to help them pay their rent and their back rent. And only 11% of that money has been used. So the renters aren't bothering to look it up or they just don't even know it exists. So I just don't see where it's going to be a good idea to send out a bunch of stimulus checks. Um, but that seems to be the world we're living in right now. If that doesn't happen, what's going to happen to that inventory? Uh, I've been reading a lot that it looks like the mom and pop um, landlords, you know, you and me that own the rental here and there, um, are just going to get out. We're just going to take our equity and the heck with it. I'm getting out. Uh, the institutional investors, the big ones, they're probably going to be lining up trying to buy a bunch of them. So I don't see a huge pop in inventory that's going to be available for you and me. We may see a little, but this happened just a few weeks ago. And as you can see today, we only have 7,000 homes on the market. That's still higher than what we've been running. And I expect that to go up to probably 7,600 by Saturday. Uh, but, you know, if we were going to have a big bump of homes hitting the market, that number would be much larger than 7,000. So um, that's going to be a fun one to watch. So stay tuned. Um, these live replays now replay later on in the afternoon around four or five o'clock. So for those that miss it, but I'm going to show you a little view here. As long as I got you on the phone, there we are, folks. This is Lake Crescent. It's 13 miles long. It is super deep. Uh, when I got here the other day, I saw this young man walking out of the lodge here with a towel on. And he just looked at me and he goes, don't go swimming. It's cold. <laughs> It is a cold, cold lake, even in August. So I hope everybody has a terrific day. I don't think I'll be live streaming tomorrow. I know I won't be on at uh, 3 o'clock with Pat because I'll be traveling further up the road, going to my cousin's place and having a good Labor Day weekend with all the family. So have a great weekend, folks. Take care. See you Monday.